Welcome pre-cal students to the second part, part two of the review sheet. Uh, we are now on page 644 and we're starting off with number four. So you should have the review sheet in front of you. I'll, sc I'll scroll up very quickly here. Um, you should know by now the review sheet is this right here. Page 644, these numbers, and page 652, these numbers here. If you don't have that, then pause the video and go ahead and copy that down. Okay, we have 15 problems to go, and we'll be finished. So here's the first one right here. Uh, for number uh, four, they want us to graph this on a polar grid. Now what I'm not going to do is take a lot of time and actually draw a polar grid. Okay, hopefully on your test I'll be able to put one on there for you, but if I can can't students it's really 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 simple to do I mean all that it means is <clears throat> let me quickly get my Mimeo pad turned on here all you're doing is rotating 135 degrees okay so just draw your axes like that and then you're rotating 135 degrees so that would be what right there and then your hypotenuse comes out three units so let's just say that the circles went like this one two three so you rotated 135 degrees and then now notice this the three is negative right the three is negative so we have to then reverse this line here and go this direction and so here's our ordered pair right here so 135 I rotated 135 degrees to right there I drew my hypotenuse put three circles because we're dealing with a number three then I realized hold it it's a negative three so I have to reverse my hypotenuse or this ray right here to the other quadrant and go out one two three all right let's take a look at number at this one here negative 315 degrees now it's still um, pretty simple I mean you rotate negative 315 degrees so if I rotate negative 315 it'd be right to there and you go ahead and draw a line coming off like this so there we go and then we're looking at hap it happens to be a three again so I know I'm gonna draw um, three circles so I rotated 315 there's my ray and then three circles one two three and then it's a positive three so we don't reverse the ray and go this way like the last problem we just go up three and there's the point so you really don't have to have a polar grid you can just do it like that and that's totally totally acceptable okay all right let's take a look now at number 14 number 14 they have points a b c and d so a b C and D. They want us to write the ordered pair, <clears throat> of course the coordinates I should say, in polar form. Now let's go ahead and start off with point A here. First of all this is 30 degrees pi over 6, this is 60 degrees pi over 3, and A is right in the middle so it looks like that would be 45 degrees. So point A, if you look here at point A, it's been rotated up to right here 45 degrees. So I know I'm going to put 45 degrees. And then how far up is it? Well it's up one unit. One. If it was here it would be two. If it was here it would be three. If it was here it would be four. So it's up one. So I put a one. Now if the original problem is in radians you really should write your final answer in radians. So 45 degrees is pi over four. Moving on to B. Okay here's point B right here. So we rotate around 270 degrees. Okay or three pi over two. So that's how far we rotate it around. And then how far out is this point? Well, it's out. Here's the center. Oh, by the way, I made a mistake on this one right here, and I apologize to you guys. I'm sorry. It's totally my fault. Letter A right here. Letter A. See how the center is right here? So really, it's out one, two, three, four, five. So this point is out one, 
2. So this should be a 2. Sorry about that. And now point B, start in the center here at the origin and go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's out 5 units. There we go. Let's take a look at point C. Point C is right here and this would be 150 degrees right here 5 pi over 6 and this would be 180 so right in the middle see how this points right in the middle there's no ray coming out pretend there is a ray coming out right here and that would be 165 degrees okay so we know that we rotate around 165 degrees and we'll worry about the radians for that later and then we look at it and we say okay how far out is that point from the middle well here's the middle it's out one two three four so four comma 165 degrees now if we converted 165 degrees to radians we would get uh, 11 pi over 12 so if you want to make that radians 11 pi over 12. All right, and then letter D is here's the uh, here's the point, and 5 pi over 3 um, <clears throat> is 300 degrees. We're going to rotate from here all the way around. That's 300 degrees, or we'll leave it in radians. 5 pi over 3, and then of course we ask ourselves how far out is that ordered pair? Well, here's the center and it's out one two three so three comma five pi over three all right so there we go moving on now to the next problem um, number 16 says the directions for 16 state find the polar coordinates express the angle in degrees and in radians using the smallest possible positive angle okay no big deal so we're gonna write this in polar form it's actually really easy to do I'm gonna go really fast we know we're at negative four and positive four so a negative and a positive, negative and a positive. So I put my point up here, give myself a nice big triangle like usual, come down. I know I'm over 4. I know I'm up 4. And now look how easy it is to write this number in polar form. All that I need is the length of the hypotenuse, <clears throat> and I can find that so quickly. I mean the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared. That would be the square root of 32. 16 plus 16 and don't forget you can break down 32 into 16 times 2 cross off your 16 and put a 4 on the outside so 4 square root of 2 is the length of the hypotenuse so that quickly I found out how far out that point is from the middle from the middle to out here it's a distance of 4 square root of 2 now all that I have to find is this angle right here well, of course, we find the angle inside the triangle, and I'm going to use this and this adjacent over um, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of x equals adjacent or opposite over adjacent, and of course, 4 over 4 is 1, and you're going to get 45 degrees. If you look at your table, you'll see it's 45 degrees. The tangent of 45 is 1, so the angle inside the triangle is 45, so from here to here it's 135. So this ordered pair right here has polar coordinates of, we rotate 135 degrees, and the distance out the point is, is 4 square root of 2. So there you go. That's polar form just like that. All you had to do was find the hypotenuse and this angle right here. Pretty simple. Okay, let's take a look at um, number 30. And here on number 30, they want us to find the rectangular coordinates. So now we're going to write this, we're going to graph it, and then find the rectangular. Now watch how easy this is. We know we're going to rotate how many degrees? 30. We know we're going to draw a nice big triangle, so we got a lot of room to work. So we're going to put 30 degrees right here. And we know the point from here to here is how far out. Well, it's a, it's a distance of six, six units. So if I want to write the polar coordinates of this ordered pair, I need to know what the x is and the y is. Well, all I have to do is find how far over it is, that's my x, and how far up it is, that's my y. It's that easy. And we can use our trig functions. It's a right triangle. So, for example, I can say sine of 30 equals 
opposite over a hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 6. 6 sine of 30 equals y. Now the sine of 30 is 1 half, so we really have 6 times 1 half, which is 3. So you just found y. y is 3. Now let's find x. Cosine of 30 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 6. And then the cosine of 30, let's see here, is square root of 3 over 2. So I have 6 parentheses square root of 3 over 2 equals x and then put the 6 over 1, 6 over 1 times square root of 3 over 2. This would cancel and you would get 3 square root of 3 equals x. So x is 3 square root of 3. So I have a question for you. How far over is this point? 3 square root of 3. How far up is this point? 3. So the ordered pair is 3 square root of 3 comma 3. There. You just took an ordered pair that was written in polar form and you wrote it in standard or rectangular form. Very good. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Uh, number 50, or excuse me, number uh, yes, number 50. We're going to convert um, this equation over to a polar equation. Now, there are three formulas that we're going to use that will help us do that, okay? And those three formulas are, and I'll be honest with you, um, I am a pretty prepared teacher, but I am looking these up very quickly here. And let's see. One of the formulas is x equals r cosine theta. Another one that we learned is y equals r sine theta. And then the other formula is r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now I did in your notes, let me get a drink of water here real quick. I did, in your notes, prove to you where these formulas came from. And you don't have to know that proof, but I'm just saying that we did do that, okay? All right, now the goal is this. The goal is to not have any x's and y's. You want r's and sines and cosines if you want polar, if you want a polar equation. If you want a rectangular equation, you want x's and y's. Well, obviously, we have x's and y's, so this is a rectangular equation. And if you look at the directions, they want us to write this in pol as a polar equation. So I have x squared. I'm going to put 3, then a parentheses. And instead of putting x squared, for x, I'm going to put r cosine theta, and then parentheses. And then for the y, I'm going to put r sine theta and all of that equals 81 and one thing I did forget see how the x here is squared I should have put a squared right here now the 3 is not being squared it is not so I'm gonna bring the 3 down and then put 3 times r squared cosine squared because this is one term so I multiply the 2 times the 1 and the 2 times the 1 and then times r sine theta equals 81 alright now I'm not sure exactly how far on this problem here they want you to take it on a test or a quiz as always I will tell you um, if you need to take the problem a little further um, or not. For me, I would probably divide both sides by 3. Remember students, this is not a plus sign and this is not a plus sign. So you do not have 1, 2, 3 terms. That is not the case. We have multiplication here and multiplication here. This is all one big term. So I'm going to divide, I would divide this term by 3 and I would divide this term by 3 and I, I think that's the best thing to do and you're going to be left with r squared cosine squared theta r sine theta, okay? 
which equals what? 27. And then r times r is r cubed. So I would leave it as r cubed cosine squared theta sine theta equals 27. Okay? That's what I would do. And there you go. Notice there's no x's or no y's left. We just have r's and sines of theta and cosines of theta. And that's it. All right. Let's take a look now at this polar equation. And they're going to want us to take this and write it in rectangular form. Let me go back a page and very quickly just try to save me some time. And let's do that. And let's grab this and let's drag it right over here. And then we'll have our a formulas we're going to use. Now this equation here is interesting. A lot of students notice right away that we want to get rid of our r's and our sines and our cosines and get x's and y's in there. So the most common sense thing that you think you would do is you would take this r and you would substitute this the square root of x squared plus y squared, which seems smart at the time because it gets rid of the r and gives you x's and y's. The problem though is there's absolutely no substitution you can do now for sine theta or cosine theta. Okay, So here's what I would suggest. It would be great if we had an r with every term. And you say, why, Mr. R? And I'll show you why in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and multiply this entire equation by r. Now watch what happens when I do this. r times r is r squared. r times 5 sine is 5 r <coughs> sine theta equals. And then r times 7 cosine theta is 7 r cosine theta. Now watch, this is so cool, look. Now I can make a bunch of substitutions. For example, r cosine. What does r cosine theta equal? x. So for this right here, I can put an x. So bring down your 7 and then put an x. Look at this. I have r sine theta. What does r sine theta equal? y. So for that, I can put a y, bring down your 5. I now have a 5y. Now for r squared, it's a positive 5y, bring down that plus sign. For r squared, what does r equal? The square root. So I can put the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now notice I'm putting that in for r, so I've got to bring down this 2 right here, okay? So I bring this 2 down right here. And so it's r squared. Now, whenever you square a square root, you get what's on the inside. So I'm left with x squared plus y squared plus 5y. Then bring your 7x over and make it negative. Negative 7x equals 0. And there you did it. Now, Mr. Earhart, why did you bring the 7x over? Do you really have to do that? Probably not. And I don't think I would take points off on that. But usually in most of these um, rectangular equations, they're going to want you to, to, to move the x's and y's over to one side in most cases. So we're just simplifying a little bit. Okay. All right, moving on. All right, another trig, um, another, uh, sorry, I'm going brain dead, another polar equation, and they want us to convert this over to a rectangular equation. I'm assuming. Let me, let me look at the directions. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm totally wrong, and I apologize. I'm glad I looked at the directions first. They want us to graph this. Um, let's see how many we got. 68 and 70 and just two of them. Okay. They want us to graph this polar equation. Now, on your review sheet, I've given you two of these. They're really a pain to do, and I know that. And I don't want to really stress you guys out over this. I will quickly go over the, I got to quit using x and y. That's incorrect. It's theta and r. And we're going to put 0 in. We're going to go in increments of 30. I'm going to go as fast as I can. Okay. 
Now, if you have a graph, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you're fine. But if you do, um, you can do this really fast. Remember, you go to your mode button and push mode and go down to the fourth line and go over to the POL, highlight polar, then come out of it. Then go to your R equals or your your Y equals button, excuse me for yawning, and you would enter two and there's no secant button so you'd hit parentheses and secant is the same thing as one over cosine so one divided by cosine then you hit that button that says x t theta n it says x comma t comma theta comma n it's a button that looks like that and you push that and up cops up pops theta and then you close your parentheses and the reason it's so important if you have a graphing calculator chase and matthew once you type that in and then go to your now listen to me carefully go to your second window hit second and then window and up will pop your table set under table set go down to table start and put zero and the very next thing below that it says tbl set that at 30 so it's an increments of 30 and then go to your table and all the values will pop up for you and that's so much faster than typing all of these things in now having said that you students that do not have a graphing calculator you're also fine you're gonna to have to quickly enter each one of these into the equation and then go from there okay so if you put zero in you will get a two and this will be a 2.3 60 will give us out a four 90 would be an error so we're gonna put a u for u in for undefined and this would be a negative 4, and this would be a negative 2.3, and this would be a negative 2, negative 2.3, negative 4, error, so undefined, 4, 2.3, and then back to 2. Now, notice something here as you graph this notice your highest r values and lowest are going from four to four so as you draw your polar grid the most you're going to have to do here students is going to be four circles okay one two three four okay not the best but good enough and now I'm going in increments of 30 so 0 30 60 oh wow that's really good 90 120 150 Now I'm going to quickly save this for the next problem. I'm not sure if it'll be good enough for the next problem, but hopefully it will be. So let me quickly do that if you guys don't mind. Not sure why I did it like that. Okay, there we go. Now, um, uh, remember 0, 30, 60, etc. So 0, 2, so we know we're at 0 when we come out to 2, okay? And then 30, so 2.3, so at 30 we're at 1, 2, 2.3, and then at 60 we're at 4, so 60 is way out at 4, and then 90 is undefined, okay? So I would, I would strongly suggest what we probably ought to do there is put in a couple of values, seeing what happens when we get close to 90. If Think about it, guys. If 90 is undefined, then I'd really like to know what this thing is doing at 89 um, 89 degrees so I'm gonna quickly check that out and I'm just gonna type into my calculator here 1 divided by the cosine of 89 degrees and I'm getting 57 okay so what that means is this graph hits here here and I wonder what it does at about um, 
75 right in the middle is 3 okay so it does hit uh, here so it goes here to here and then I kind of put 75 and see what it's doing in the middle and it goes down to 3 so it kind of hits and curves back down and somewhere it's going to hit and then it's going to shoot up really far like at 89 degrees it goes all the way up to 57 and it's undefined so it keeps going on and on and up but it will not cross that line right there and then we know at 120 so it should be coming back down like this and then hitting about right here and then at 120 um, let's see here no, that's incorrect, and I apologize. Um, at 120, <clears throat> we get negative 4. So 90, 120, negative 4, that'd be right here. And then at 150, uh, we get negative 2.3. So 12.3. And then at 180, we get negative 2. So right here. And then 210 is negative 2.3. So 210 hits right here again. And then 240 hits negative 4 right here. Then 270 is undefined. And then 300 is 4. So it looks like we're getting a graph that goes like this. Hits here. Hits here. Curves down to here. And then shoots way up this direction here. I can explain that a little better on Monday when you all come into class. But that is kind of the graph you would get there. Um, if you were to graph this okay all right let's take a look now at number <clears throat> number 70 and hopefully we can move this out of the way just a little bit I hope all right there we go now again it's the exact same thing that we did before um, as much of a pain that it is and I know these problems take a while but I only gave you two of these in the review sheet and I probably will only give you one of these in the test I'm not going to promise but <clears throat> more than likely so uh, very quickly here let's get our table of values ready I'll try to write that as quickly as possible. We're going to go 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. Okay, I paused the video and I went ahead and entered this into my calculator so I could write the table of values quickly. Um, zero is going to give you out 0.5, so 0.5. 30 would be 0.53. 60 would be 0.66 repeating. 90 would be a 1. 120 would be 2. 150 would be 7.5. 180 is going to be undefined. 210 will be 7.5. 240 would be 2. 270 would be 1. 300 would be 0.67 or 66 6 repeating. 330 is 0.53. And then uh, 360 is 0.5. So here we go. Let's move very quickly. I will have to add some circles. It looks like my highest number goes up to 7. So let me do this. We have what? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 5. There we go. And then... Six. And then seven. Okay, very good. Now, let's see what we got here. Our first point is 0 0.5, so we're at the zero ray right here. And we go out a half, so we can barely see it. In fact, we're going to, well, we'll call it a half, so right, this will be really hard to see. And then 30 will be 0 0.5, so same thing here, 0 0.5. 60 is going to be 0 0.6, so we're barely moving. And then 90 finally gets to 1 right here. 120, uh, 90 is at 1. 120 finally gets to two and then 150 is 7.5 so way out here 
and then 180 is undefined. So I would like to see what this thing is doing at 179 degrees, getting right up to 180. So I'm going to type in my calculator 1 divided by, let's see, cosine 1 plus cosine of 179. I'm getting 6,565. So I know when it gets to 179 degrees, it's going to be way out here somewhere. I'm going to try something in between 150 and 180. I'm going to try 165 very quickly here, 165. So let's see what that gives me. 29. So I know at 169 or 165, I'm getting 29 out here. So it looks like it's going to come around like this, circle a little bit, hit here, hit here, and curve and hit there, and then shoot way out here, but it's never going to cross this line, this one, this 180 degree line will get closer and closer, but it will never touch it. And I think the same thing is going to happen over here, let's see, 210 would be 7.5, so right here, <clears throat> um, 240 would be Two, 270 would be 1, uh, 300 would be 0.6, then here, then here, so it comes out kind of like this one, it looks like, hits here, and then it's going to break in a little bit like that, and then shoot way out here like this. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's kind of what it would look like. We're just sketching them and that's definitely sufficient. Pretty cool if you ask me. I like this kind of stuff. All right, um, now we're moving on to page 652. The directions for number two says, here we go, um, tell, uh, let's see, sketch the pair of vectors and determine whether they are equivalent. So let me quickly write down point D is negative one, negative one. And point J, if you'll look in your book, is 3, 1. So there we go. Now, OF, point O is 0, 0. And point F is 2, 1. There we go. So very quickly, let's plot our first vector. Negative 1, negative 1. So right there. And then 3, 1. Right there. So there's our first vector. All right. And now the other vector is 0, 0 over to up one, so right here and here to here. Now, can I be honest with you? Is there any reason at all to do any research on this? Come on, guys, common sense. I mean, it's obvious if one vector starts here and goes to here, <clears throat> and the other vector starts here and goes here, there's no way they're the same length. Listen to me, guys. You need three things to have equivalent vectors. They have to have the same length or magnitude, whatever you want to call it, they have to be going the same direction. That means one cannot be pointing one way and another pointing another way. And they have to have the same slope, which I guess the same direction. But um, you have to be careful because one line, could, one vector could look like this, and another vector could look like this, and they have the same slope, but they're going different directions. So that's why I say three things: length, direction, and slope. Well, there's no way they have the same length. Look how long this one is compared to this one. Now, if it's not really, really obvious, then you're going to have to do a more thorough check. But when it's that obvious, we're moving on. Okay. All right. Number four. Um, point C is negative two five. You'll find those in your book negative 2, 5, and G is negative 4, 4, negative 4, 4. F is 2, 1, and O, 2, 1, there we go, sorry about that, and O is 0, 0. Now, negative 2, 5, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there we go, and then negative 4, four. So right here. So it starts here. That's the first C is your first point. So I start here and I go this direction. Hopefully I can draw better than that. Wow. It's still pretty bad. There we go. Now here we go over two, up one, 
and then zero zero so I start here and I go like this that's gonna be really close it looks like they might have the same length and I know they're going the same direction they're pointing the same direction and they might have the same slope so let's check this shall we two points at a time okay so I'm gonna take my eraser get rid of all this I don't need it let's first of all grab these ordered pairs right here drag it over here and let's start first of all with this vector let's find how long it is remember how to do that x minus x so negative 2 minus a negative 4 squared plus y minus y 5 minus 4 squared remember this is your x this is your y this is your x this is your y now we can do this a lot of this in our head negative 2 minus a negative 4 is 2 squared that's 4 5 minus 4 is 1 1 squared is 1 4 plus 1 is 5 so the length of this vector is square root of 5 now let's find the length of this vector x minus x that's 2 minus 0 squared plus y minus y 1 minus 0 squared 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Look at that. We have the same length. So, so far, so good. Now, let's check the slope, okay? And if the slopes are the same, then we know these two vectors are equivalent. So, we had to check, remember, three things. We have to check the length. We just did that and they had the same length. We checked the direction. Remember when we graphed them, they were facing the same way, they were pointing the same way, and now we gotta check the slope. So here we go. Um, slope is pretty fast. Y minus Y over X minus X. So Y minus Y over X minus X, and you would get one over two. Five minus four is one, negative two minus a minus four is two. If you're weak with your sign numbers, use your calculator. Y minus Y, one minus zero, x minus x, 2 minus 0, end up with 1 half. So look at that, their slopes check. So yes, these two vectors are equivalent. They are definitely equivalent. All right, number 28. Or excuse me, not number 28. Number 14, a good old word problem. We love word problems. Two forces of 50 and 60 newtons act on an object at right angles. <clears throat> Find the magnitude of the resultant and the angle that it makes with the larger force. Okay, so we have a force of 50 newtons and 60 newtons, and we know one is going uh, this direction here, and one is going this direction here. And let's go ahead and make this one 50 since it's shorter, and we'll make this one 60. Now remember what to do from here. We go ahead and draw our parallelogram. This is called the law of the parallelogram for vectors. And then when we ask you to find the magnitude or the resultant, excuse me, of these two vectors, it's always going to be this diagonal right here. So that's what we're trying to find is that diagonal right there. Now, let's continue on. If I'm trying to find this length right here of this diagonal, remember, I know this is 90 degrees right here. It said that in the problem. So if that's 90 degrees, I know I have 90 degrees over here also, okay? And I'm trying to find the length of this line right here. So I think it would help me if I could cut this triangle out and just work with this triangle all by itself, okay? So that's what I'm going to try to do here very quickly. And I'm going to pull this triangle out and put it right here. Now I know if this is 50 here, this is 50, so this is 50 here. I know this is a right angle, and I know this is 60. Now I can find this law of cosines. My goodness, x squared equals 60 squared plus, oh, hold on, what am I saying? I made a mistake. Law of cosines is awesome, but it's a right triangle, isn't it? My goodness, if it's a right triangle, let's use Pythagorean's theorem. So the square root of 50 squared plus 60 squared. Let me quickly grab my calculator here and see what we get. 50 squared is going to be 2,500. 60 squared is going to be 3,600. And when you add those two together, you will get 6,100. 
and the square root of 6100 is 78.1 so 78 so we just found the length of x is 78 so now we found the magnitude or the resultant the magnitude of this resultant right here is 78 so we're halfway done 78 what 78 newtons n 78 newtons now the problem says this are you ready it says find the angle that's formed with the resultant and the larger force okay here's the resultant and here's the larger force. So I want this angle right here, which is this angle right here. It's a right triangle, guys. Use your sine, cosine, and tangent. This is called opposite, this is called adjacent. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So that's a calculator problem. If you hit inverse tangent because you're looking for an angle and then take 50 divided by 60 and hit enter, you're going to get 39.8 and we're going to call that 40 degrees. So this angle is 40 degrees. So there you did it. You found the resultant and you found the angle that they're asking for. Let me get a drink of water here. <clears throat> Alright, moving on to number uh, the next number, whatever that is, number 18. Okay, what they want us to do is they want us to find the resultant of these two vectors, um, give them magnitude um, of the resultant, and then they want us to find, uh, let's see, they want us to find the angle that is formed with the resultant and vector u. Now, notice for 18, we have 150 degrees. And I think we had this one in our notes, so it'll be kind of review for us. The two vectors are formed at an angle of 150 degrees. So I know I want one angle going this way, and then one angle going about that direction there. Okay, good enough. And now, I'm going to call one's 43 and one's 50, so I guess we'll call this one 43, it's shorter, and we'll call this one 54, and this is U, and this is V. Now you know what to do from here. We're going to finish off our parallelogram. And then, of course, if these are the two vectors, which they are, our resultant is going to be this diagonal right here. Now, I know this whole angle right here is 150 degrees because they told us that in the problem right here, 150. Okay? So we know this angle is 150. Now, what I've taught you is in a parallelogram, when when any two angles are side by side, they're always going to add up to 180. So if this angle is 150, then I know this angle here has to be 30. And that's really helpful, because if I want to make this x right here and find this length, the magnitude of that resultant, I'm going to need to know this angle right here. And here's why. Watch. I'm going to cut this triangle out. And I'm going to pull it over here. And I'm going to label this triangle very quickly. I know this is 30 degrees here. And I know this bottom length is 54. Now think about it. If this length here is 43, then this length over here is 43. So this will be 43. Now unlike the last problem, we do not have a right triangle, so we're going to have to use the law of cosine. So we want to find this length here, which is the same as this length right here. So x squared equals 54 squared plus 43 squared minus 2 times 54 times 43 cosine of 30 degrees. Now I'm going to quickly grab my calculator and just bear with me and type all this in. So 54 squared plus 43 squared, and you should be doing the same thing, minus 2 times 54 times 43 times cosine of 30 degrees. And you're going to get 700, I'm going to write it down for you here, you're going to get this right here, x squared equals 743 point one seven eight zero two four eight now I'm going to take the square root of both sides and if I do that correctly I'll get 27.26 so I'm going to put 
27.3. So now I know this length right here is 27.3, which is the same length as this. So there, we found the resultant, or the magnitude of the resultant, sorry. This line here is the resultant vector, and the length of it, or the magnitude of it, is 27.3. Now next, listen to me carefully, it says find the angle that's formed with the resultant, here's the resultant, and vector u. Here's vector u. So we want to find this angle right here, which is the exact same angle as this angle here. Now, I notice right away that I've got a pair, I've got a side right here, and an angle opposite. So I can use law of sines, and law of sines is a lot easier than law of cosines, okay? So I'm going to say that 27.3 over the sine of 30 equals, now here's the angle I'm trying to find, and the opposite side is 43, so I'm going to say 43 over the sine of theta. Now cross multiply and then divide, and if you do that correctly, you're going to get sine of theta equals 43 sine of 30 it would be over 27, because when you multiply these two right here, you'll have a 27.3 right here. But then when you divide both sides by 27.3, then the 27.3 will be over here, all right? So if I take my calculator and type into it, let me go ahead and write sine of theta equals, I'm going to type in 43 sine of 30, enter, divided by 27.3, I'm going to get 0.78745, take the inverse sine to find theta of that decimal number, and you'll get 51.9, so I'm going to go ahead and say 52 degrees. So now you found this angle, theta equals 52 degrees. So we're moving right along, not too bad. I believe we have two more problems left, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe that's correct. Okay, let's continue on now and take a look at number 30. Number 30. A wind has an easterly component of 10 kilometers per hour and a southerly component of 16 kilometers per hour. Find the magnitude and the direction of the wind. Okay, number 30 reads as follows. A wind has an easterly component of 10 kilometers per hour and a southerly, southerly component of 16 kilometers per hour. Find the magnitude and the direction of the wind. Um, I paused the video, so I hope I didn't repeat myself and read the problem twice, but if I did, I apologize. Okay, I, I've worked the pro I paused the video so I could work it out first. I don't like word problems. It can be a little confusing with the wording. Um, I think math problems should test your math ability, um, not... I mean, the reading ability is fine, but I just, there's something here. When it says to me, coming from the east, to me that means you draw it coming from the east, that direction. From the east, coming this way. And from the south means coming from the south, going this way. But that's not how they drew it up in the book, so we're going to do it their way, which is fine. Um, when they say a wind has an easterly component coming from the east, that means we have a, 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 a vector going that way to the east with a magnitude of 10. And then it says a southerly component, so it means um, going down this way, and it has a magnitude or a length of 16. So there's our two vectors applying at that point right there. Find the magnitude and the direction of the wind. Now we do know that we have a right angle here because it says east and south. So if we're going to find if we're going to find that resultant, we know what to do. We draw that parallelogram very quickly. 
and then we go ahead and draw the resultant that we're looking for this diagonal right here so we're looking for that length okay and we know if that's a right angle then we know this is a right angle right here also and if this is 10 up here then this is 10 right here so I can find X pretty quickly I'm gonna cut that triangle out I can find X pretty quickly using Pythagorean's theorem all right, so let's pull that triangle out over here. And this is a length of 16. This is a right angle. This is a length of 10. This is my x. So using Pythagorean's theorem, I would have 16 squared plus 10 squared. And that's going to give me, uh, let's see, 256 plus 100, the square root of 356 and when you take the square root of that you're going to get 18.86 so 18.9 approximately so there just like that I found the magnitude of the resultant it's 18.9 is the length of this line here or the magnitude or the length of the resultant now next they want us to find the direction of the wind now see this point right here we're going to pretend for a second let me get an eraser here and do some erasing. We're going to pretend, hold on one second, that this is like the origin on a coordinate plane. Okay, just bear with me and watch, okay? So there's my y-axis. Here's my pitifully drawn x-axis. Now when it says what's the direction of the wind, remember we have a a easterly component and a southerly com a southern component okay and now the southerly components this way easterly is this way and they want to know the direction of the wind well just like an airplane the direction of the wind is always going to start here and go until you come to the hypotenuse so I know from here to here is 90 degrees I know that so I've got to find this little angle right here and then add it to 90. Well, that should be pretty easy to do. Here's 16, so I know I have a 16 over here. I've got a right triangle. Here's my right angle. So I can just say opposite over adjacent, tangent. So I can very quickly just say tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. So a second tangent of 16 divided by 10 gives me 57.99 so 58 degrees so I know this X right here is 58 degrees so if from here to here is 90 and from here to here is 58 then my total angle is 148 degrees and that's the direction of the wind alright yeehaw one more problem left number 38 here we go um, a baseball player throws a baseball with the speed uh, vector s of 72 miles per hour at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal resolve the vector s into two components this is really easy to do um, very simple to do it simply says he throws a baseball at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal so here's the horizontal he throws the ball and it goes at an angle of 45 degrees I don't really care if my drawing is drawn to scale 45 degrees and the vector of this ball that's being thrown is uh, 72 miles per hour and they want us to take this this vector here and break it up into two vectors like this um, one going this way and the other going this way so really students it's this easy they just want us to find the length of this green line and the length of this green line and but that's really easy to do I mean whatever this is right here that would be the same as this length over here right here so we have a right triangle so I'm just going to simply call this X and call this Y and we're home free okay so here we go I mean um, the sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse multiply both sides by 72 72 sine of 45 degrees equals y and then very quickly with my calculator 72 sine of 45 would be 50.91 I'm just gonna call it 51 so y equals 51 
and then cosine of 45 degrees equals x over 72. Multiply both sides by 72. 72 cosine of 45 equals x. So 72 cosine 45, enter 50.911, so 51 also. Which I should have known that it makes sense since this is 45 degrees. But anyways, so this has a magnitude of 51, and this has a magnitude of 51. And so what I would say, I would say that you have a, a horizontal, um, your horizontal component is 51 miles per hour, and your uh, vertical, uh, your vertical component is also 51 miles per hour. Okay, because 72 was miles per hour, so this will be miles per hour, and this will be miles per hour. And we did it, another review sheet done. So there we go. I hope this has been a help to you. Please call or email if you have any questions.